Hello everyone, welcome to Conquer Learning. My name is Lakshmi Kushwaha and I am verified educator on an academy. So in today's class, we are going to learn theories of wages, which is very important for those students, those who are preparing for NTA NET JRF exam in code 55, those who are preparing for ALC exam and those who are preparing for any kind of PSU exam. This theories of wages become very important because in every exam, this ha there has been the question asked from this particular, all these theories. So now let's move to the theories. There are almost 11 important theories of the wages and each one of them are important since if PYQs, when we have analyzed it, we have found that from every topic, every theory, there has been a question. Usually it is asked in the form of the match of match the following. So please remember the author and the theory and their concept. So first theory is your subsistence theory, wage fund theory, residual claimant theory, surplus value theory of money, power parity theory, marginal productivity theory, bargaining theory, compensation theory, expectancy theory, equity theory, agency theory. So let's move to our first theory that is the subsistence level, subsistence theory. This is, this was given by the author or uh, you can say the name person called as David Richardson. This theory is also called as iron law of wages or, or the Brazil law of wages. Why it is called as iron law of wages will explain you. The reason is it remained fixed on subsistence level. Now, what do you mean by subsistence level? Those level or subsistence is nothing but something which is at survival, required only for survival, merely the survival level. So, that is called as the subsistence level. So, in this particular theory, the wages are determined by cost of production or through the subsistence level. Means your wages would be given to you merely for survival or wages are given to the employees just for their survival as per the cost of production they are incurring. So uh, for employing any of the uh, employing any of the employee, the employer faces certain cost. So according to his cost of production, the wages are given to him or it is given according to the subsistence level means whatever wages are required just for their survival, the wages are given to them and it is fixed. The wages would be given to them and it would be fixed. Now let's say wages, suppose the wages are around 1000 rupees for the employee. Now subsistence level says that, subsistence level says that if suppose these wages are at the subsistence level, he would be able to survive. In case these wages are below the subsistence level, what would happen? Means these wages are fixed, but the salary required for the subsistence or the survival of the employees is somewhere higher. So in that case, what would happen? The employee would die of malnutrition. He would die of malnutrition and as a, as a result, there would be lesser number of the labors. Next case is, if these wages are higher than the subsistence, suppose the subsistence level or survival level falls. So if suppose these wages are higher, so he is happy now. He is, he is having the salary which is above the subsistence level, survival level. So he would get married and uh, he, there would be more supply of the labor. So subsistence theory says that if the wages fall below the subsistence level, there would be fall in the labor supply. If the subsistence, in, if the wages increase above the subsistence level, there would be increase in labor supply. So that is the subsistence theory of wages. So wages are determined by the cost of production of labor or the subsistence level, which then remain fixed. It says that workers are paid to enable them to subsist, perpetuate the race without increase or diminution. If the actual wages falls below the subsistence level, मतलब क्या employer ने क्या किया कुछ wages को fix कर दिया employee के लिए ये wages fix कर दिए as per the cost of production मतलब जो भी खर्चा उनका लगता है एक employee के ऊपर उस हिसाब से एक employee के उन्होंने wages को क्या कर दिए fix कर दिए अब ये wages जो उनको fix कर दिए suppose let's say हजार रुपए thousand रुपए fix कर दिए if the wages falls below the subsistence level. Subsistence means where survival is 
मिनिमम सर्वाइवल सो सपोज सब्सिस्टेंस लेवल पे कम से कम दो हजार रुपए चाहिए और उसे केवल हजार रुपए मिल रहे तो क्या होगा इट इज सेट इन दिस थियोरी दैट ही वुड डाई ऑफ माल न्यूट्रिशन वाई बिकॉज उसके पास पैसा ही नहीं है एज अ रिजल्ट लेबर सप्लाई वुड डिक्रीज लेबर सप्लाई वुड डिक्रीज एंड देयर वुड बी एन इंक्रीज इन दी वेजेस ऑफ अदर लेबर्स नाउ इन अनदर केस दूसरे केस में अगर यही वेजेस सब्सिस्टेंस लेवल से ऊपर चलते हैं मतलब सर्वाइवल के लिए केवल पांच सौ रुपए चाहिए और उनको एम्प्लॉयर हजार रुपए दे रहा है सो दे वुड बी हैप्पी दे वुड बी लिविंग द लाइफ हैप्पीली एज अ रिजल्ट दे वुड हैव लॉन्ग लाइफ हेल्थी लाइफ दे वुड गेट मैरिड एंड देयर वुड बी मोर सप्लाई ऑफ द लेबर आई होप दैट इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन सो इफ द एक्चुअल वेजेस फॉल बिलो द सब्सिस्टेंस लेवल पॉपुलेशन विल डिक्रीज रिजल्टिंग इन द डिक्लाइन इन लेबर सप्लाई एंड राइज इन वेजेस it if the actual wages are higher than the subsistence level then the population will increase leading to an increase in the labor supply and lower wages so these labor supply and wages are inversely related matlab supply zyada hoga to wages kam honge lower wages honge itne sare logo ko chhota sa supply de so chote se wages ko distribute karna hai 100 rupaye hai agar 10 log hai to 10 10 rupaye milenge bhai 100 rupaye hai 50 log hai to kam milenge so low wages so low wage leads to the decrease of labor due to the death and malnutrition will higher while higher wages increase their number due to the better health long life and more marriages so this is the subsistence theory assumption here is food production is subject to law of diminishing returns there is a limit of expansion of food production so we say that food production would be available if the salary is good the good food would be available so it is limited to certain extent population increases at increasing rate and it says that population keeps on increasing at increasing rate what is the criticism incorrect relation between marriage and wages so it's not important the person who is getting the higher wages would get married and the person who don't get the wages won't get married so it's an indirect relationship explains the wage from supply side ignores the demand side it only says that supply of labor would be high and supply of labor would be low it has not covered that what is the demand of the labor for employer unki kya demand hai wo kaise logo ko chahte it has been ignored fails to explain why wages differ from occupation to occupation and from person to person so every person is different skills different abilities every occupation is differing so why wages are differing trade unions are ignored here next theory is the wage fund theory this was given by adam smith developed by adam smith and further expounded by j s mill please remember the authors now wage fund theory says that that wages are given to the employees from certain fund which is called as the wage fund the wages is given to the employee which is from the fund which is called as the wage fund or it is also called as circulating capital now since the employer holds the capital he keeps a separate wage fund for the employees and from this wage fund only the wages are given to the employees so wage fund is what a fund which is created for the employees in order to give them the salary and it is also called as the circulating capital now what happens now suppose let's say this wage fund has around 10000 rupees and there are around 10 employees so when they are 10 employees each employee would be getting what 1000 rupees now let's say there are 10 employees now let's say there is an increase in number of the laborers or increase in number of the workers what would happen the wages would decrease am i correct or not obviously when there are 10 i increase it to 20 so it would be 500 only since the wage fund is constant here the wage fund is considered to be constant so if the number of the labor increases the wages decreases similarly if the number of the labor decreases the wages would increase means agar ye 10 se 5 hi ho gaye to unki salary badh jayegi considering the wage fund is constant so wage fund theory considers that there is a wage fund a separate fund or a circulating capital which is kept aside for the purchase of labor or for the wages of the labor 
and the employer keeps on giving the wages to the employees from this particular fund. So there is a direct relationship between if the fund increases, the wages would increase. If the fund decreases, the wages would decrease. And if the labor increases, wages would decrease. And if the labor decreases, wages would increase. That is the wage fund theory. So wage level is the function of surplus fund available with the employer. So function of surplus means whatever surplus is available in the fund, the wages of uh, wages is function of this. So if I have long high fund available, the wages would be high. If I have low fund, low wages would be there. Higher fund, higher wages. The focus is on the employer and his capacity to pay. The wages depends upon two quantities, namely the fixed wage fund or a circulating capital set aside for the purchase of the labor and the number of the workers seeking employment. So it totally depends upon what? The fund which is iske upar depend karta hai aur dusri number of employees hai, wo kitne hai. So wages kam hoga ya zyada hoga, ye do cheezo pe depend karta hai ki fund mein kitna paisa hai aur kitne log as in labor available hai, wo job dhoond rahe hai. The employer set apart a certain amount of the capital to pay the wages as the labor. This is fixed and constant and this is called as the wage fund. The wage is determined by the amount of wage fund and the total number of the laborers. So, mere paas mein jitna paisa hai, 10,000 rupay hai, 10 log hai, to mera wages per employee kitne honge? 1,000 rupay. This is how it is determined. So, J.S. Mill said, wages depends upon the demand and supply of the labor or often it is expressed as the proportion between the population and capital. But population here meant the number only of the labor classes or rather those who work for hire by capital only circulating capital. So here population means people those who are available for work and capital here is fund, wage uh, capital, circulating capital. So wage rate is equal to wage fund divided by the number of the labors. So this is the wage fund theory. An increase in the wage rate is possible only by increase in wage fund or by reduction in the in the labors. So now, if you want to increase the wages, do cheese. I explained you in a previous slide also. If you want to increase in the wages, how it is possible? Either you increase the fund or you decrease the number of the labors. Right? This is possible. If you increase, you want to increase the wages, either you decrease the number of the employees or you increase the amount of the fund. Thus, there exists a direct relationship between the wage rates and wage fund and indirect relationship between number of the inverse relation between the wage rate and your number of the labor. Criticism. All workers here receive equal wages, but in reality, every wage is different. Why? Every employee is different. A worker differs in skills and abilities. There is a separate fund for the payment of the wage while in reality there is no special fund which is particularly meant for the payment of wages of worker. Assumes that labor is homogeneous. It believes that all labors are of one kind and hence everyone is getting same salary. But in reality it is not. Labors are heterogeneous. It cannot be homogeneous in nature. So this is your wage fund theory. Next is your residual claimant theory mostly asked question given by Francis Walker. Now what does this theory says? This theory says that there are four factors for any product or any kind of business or any kind of production. What are those factors? Land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship. So an employer he will first, whatever he earns, whatever he earns from the product or production, he first gives the rent or the land. Then he removes whatever expenditure he has done in the business. And then he removes his own salary, his own share. And finally, after that, whatever is left over or whatever is residue, he uses it as to give the wages to the employees. And hence, the wages here is said to be a residual. And hence, this theory is called as the residual claimant theory. Matlab kya? Sabse pehle employer ne kya kiya? Apne land ka kharcha nikala. 
कैपिटल जो भी उसने उसमें एक्सपेंडिचर किया था उसका खर्चा निकाला इन्वेस्टमेंट किया था उसका खर्चा निकाला और अपनी अपनी प्राइजेस निकाल लिए उसके बाद जो पैसा बचता है उसमें से वो वेजेस देता है एम्प्लॉयज को सो so, बचा हुआ इज कॉल्ड एज रेसिड्यू एंड हियर एम्प्लॉयज आर कॉल्ड एज द क्लेमेंट फॉर द रेसिड्यूएल हेंस द थियोरी इज कॉल्ड एज द रेसिड्यूएल क्लेमेंट थियोरी क्लियर सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस थियोरी फोर फैक्टर्स एड द वैल्यू टू द प्रोडक्ट व्हिच इज मैन्युफैक्चर दीज आर लैंड लेबर कैपिटल एंड एंटरप्रेन्योरशिप द रेवेन्यू ऑन बाय सेलिंग द प्रोडक्ट वाज फर्स्ट डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड अमंग थ्री कैपिटल थ्री लैंड कैपिटल एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो फर्स्ट तीनों का डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन कर देते हैं वट एवर इज रिमेन रिप्रेजेंट वेज एंड पेड टू देबर एज अ वेज अगेंस्ट दियर वैल्यू एडिशन हेंस द लेबर कंसिडर एज रेसिडियल क्लेमेंट इट इज पॉसिबल टू इंक्रीज नाउ हाउ देजेस वुड ऑफ द एम्प्लॉय वुड बी इंक्रीज ओनली बाय इंक्रीजिंग देअर प्रोडक्टिविटी हाउ देअर प्रोडक्टिविटी कैन बी इंक्रीज माई बाय मेकिंग देम मोर एफिशियंट सो अगर आपको अपने वेजेस इंक्रीज करने हैं आपको अच्छा काम करना पड़ेगा अच्छा काम करोगे ज्यादा प्रोडक्शन होगा ज्यादा रेस्यूडियो बचेगा सो इट इज पॉसिबल टू इंक्रीज वेजेस बाय इंक्रीजिंग द टोटल प्रोडक्ट बाय इंप्रूविंग द एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द वर्कर्स इट रिकॉग्नाइजेस दैट वर्कर हैव स्टेक इन नेशनल इनकम ऑफ द कंट्री इसलिए उनको पैसा मिलता है दिस थियोरी इज टू बी ऑप्टिमिस्टिक पॉजिटिव वे इट सजेस्ट द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ इंक्रीज इन वेजेस थ्रू इंक्रीज एफिशियंसी ऑफ वर्कर वेयर एज सबसे थियोरी एंड वेज फंड थियोरी वेयर पेसिमिस्टिक sorry so the criticism this theory assumes the share of landlords capitalist and entrepreneurs are fixed this is absolutely wrong usually what happens whenever any business is done the first person who gets the salary are the laborers so it's not fixed it is not the worker who is residual claimant but the entrepreneur it is not it does not explain the influence of trade union in the wage determination so trade unions are completely ignored the supply side of labor has been totally ignored by this theory next theory so this is the comparative chart for three theories that we studied you can just go through it already explained you i have given it in the chart form next is your surplus value theory of money given by karl marx i hope you everyone knows the karl marx is the one who has always talked about the class struggle he has always supported the capitalism he has said that the employee and the employer are two different classes and there is always a struggle whereas the employer is a capitalist who holds the power and he always dominate who he always dominate the employee so this theory says that according to karl marx labor is an article of commerce or it is a commodity for trade labor is what commodity for trade whom you can purchase it by giving the wages now employer what does he do he purchase the labor on the wages he purchase the labor for certain wages and he give the wages only for his survival rest whatever extra he earns or he makes from the production he keeps with himself that is he keeps it with whatever surplus is left he keeps with himself and hence it is called as the surplus value theory of money so according to karl marx labor was to be treated as an article of the commerce which could be purchased on payment of subsistence price kevel survival ke liye the value of product produced by labor is greater than the actual price of labor as paid in the wages so whatever wages are given to the labor they are merely for the survival whatever product they are producing actually its cost in the market or its value in the market is very high but the labor is getting only subsistence the core of capitalism is exploitation the owner of capital could force the worker to spend more time on the job and then was necessary for earning his subsistence income and he keeps on exploiting employer keeps on exploiting he would ask the labor to work for extra hours but he would give him only merely subsistence level and the excess product or surplus value that's created would be claimed by owner he would keep the amount with himself this argument was eventually disapproved later the labor theory of value and the subsistence theory of wages were also found to be invalid so this is the surplus value of theory which says that 
only the subsistence level of the wages are given to the labor and the rest surplus amount is kept or excess amount is kept with the owner. Next is your power parity theory. The wage fund or circulating capital here is fixed. Now this is somewhere related to the wage fund also but uh, kind of a described in the form of the purchasing power. So the classical economist Pigo, he has argued that the cut in wages during the unemployment and depression in the economy would help in restoring the full employment. Full employment means a condition when all the labors or all the people in the economy are able to get the employment. Jitne log hain, jitne log hain labor force mein unemployed or economy mein all are having the employment that is called as full employment. So, Pigo said that Full employment is possible if during the time of unemployment or during the time of depression, there is reduction, cut in the wages. Matlab, aap ek jan ko hi 10,000 rupay de rahe ho, it's better to give 5,000, 5,000 to two people. So, he said, cut down the wages and give the employment to everyone. But this view was criticized by Kynason who propounded a new theory applicable to economy as a whole, not, not a particular to the wages. So, Kynason ne kaha nahi, full employment is not at all possible because in depression, just by cutting the wages, it's not possible to get the full employment. He applied it to the economy. He said that if you want the full employment, there should be an, there should be an efficient demand for the labor. So, Kynason considered de determination of the wage rate from a macro viewpoint as an income for the wage earner. So, he considered that they are not the subsistence but an income. According to him, if the wage rate are high, the workers would have more purchasing power which in turn would increase the aggregate demands of good and level of the output. So, Kynason says that when there is an efficient demand in the market for the product, there would be an requirement of the labor. So, when the wage rate are high, when the wage rate are high, workers would have more purchasing power to purchase the product. If the product is having more demand between the people, it would be requiring more people to work, more production is required. As a result, more employment would be there. Conversely, if the wage rate is low, purchasing power of labor would be less, which would be lower than the aggregate demand. I will explain you in this simple term. Kynason ka kehna tha ke full employment jaisi cheez koi hoti nahi hai. Full employment is not at all possible. Something which is possible is called as underemployment. Ab ye underemployment kya hai? Jab long run mein depression or inflation aata hai, jaise abhi COVID ke time pe, what happened? People are not having the job. So, they go for underemployment. Matlab, wo aisa bhi kaam karte hai, jo unke salary ke hisaap se, unke qualification ke hisaap se nahi hai, ya unke uh, position ke hisaap se nahi hai. You must have seen number of the people who lost the job working at this uh, delivery boy or a girl at the Zomato. So, though their qualifications are higher, they are doing underemployment. So, Kynason said during the depression and inflation, it's not the full employment. Full employment hota hi nahi hai, it's the underemployment. And according to him, if there is unemployment in the market, it is due to inefficient demand. Demand nahi hai kisi product ki market mein is liye. Product ki demand nahi hai, to production nahi karenge. Production nahi karenge, to labor kyu hire karenge. So, if there is not efficient demand for the product, the labor demand would be less. So, he says, if you have great wage rate, higher wage rate, if you increase the wage rate of the employees, workers would be able to purchase the good. Mirko zada salary mil rahi hai, I would be able to purchase the good. As a result, demand for that particular good would increase. Sabke wage rate high hai, demand increase hogi. As the demand for the, demand for the good is high, obviously the aggregate demand for the good is increasing. Output is, re output is required. As a result, more labor would be required. Whereas, when the rate wage rates are low, purchasing power becomes less 
and it would lower the aggregate demand. Again, there would be an unemployment. So low aggregate demand would have an adverse impact on the level of employment and output therefore cut in wage rate instead of removing unemployment and depression would future further accentuate the problem. So according to him, wage rate should not be deducted during the inflation. It should not be cut, rather it should be provided in good form. So this is the power parity theory. So we completed first important five theories of the wages. In next video, we would be covering the next important six theories of the wages. So if you have liked the video, subscribe to the channel, hit share with the others so that more people get to know about this particular video, about this particular topic. Thank you. We would be meeting in our next video.